Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a fifth year medical resident. And today we're diving into the field of robotic prosthetics, or more accurately known as myoelectric devices. This is building on my previous video where I shadowed a prosthetist for the day, a healthcare provider who specializes in prosthetics. I learned how conventional prosthetics were made and how they're used by patients like Wayne, who lost his leg in a workplace accident. So be sure to check that out as well. What exactly is a myoelectric device? So myo meaning muscle because the device is triggered by muscle movements, for example, in the forearm and then electric because there are electrodes that pick up this muscle movement and this is what triggers the prosthetic hand to move. The device is programmed to respond to very specific muscle movements. So for example, with a prosthetic hand, the muscles that would normally cause your wrist to flex will trigger the prosthetic hand to close and the muscles that would normally cause your wrist to extend will trigger the hand to open. So for patients who've had an upper limb amputation, they have to imagine that they're moving their wrist up or down in order to activate those muscles. When a person is being fitted for a myoelectric device, the prosthetist will find the best place for the electrode. And then they test the strength of the signal to make sure that it can be detected by the device. Then the electrodes are placed into the prosthetic and you can see how the hand is responding as the electrodes sense movement. Now, of course, it's gonna be much smoother when a person's actually wearing the device. Then these electrodes are placed into the prosthesis and depending on the device, this can become quite a complex process. Now, this is my favorite part. By hooking up the prosthetic to a tablet, we can more easily test and program different hand functions. So for example, making a fist, or pointing and this is a special grip for using a computer mouse and you can even see how the index finger moves to click the mouse this opens up so many opportunities for people using these devices which is really amazing to see and depending on the type of activities a person is doing there are actually different types of myoelectric devices for example, there's one called the Greifer, and it's a lot more sturdy and works really well for manual labor like farming. Some models even allow a person to switch between a Greifer and a hand device depending on what they're doing at a given time. Isn't this incredible? I'm just completely blown away by this technology. It's so exciting. So I just assumed that everybody would want a myoelectric device over a conventional prosthetic but apparently that's actually not the case. <laughs> it definitely has its cool factor and it's really um, interesting to learn about and see, but really in reality, not everyone is a perfect candidate for these mm. and they're not the best option for um, each patient. So they're heavier and so sometimes that means you wear it less. Another thing about myoelectric devices is they can be quite expensive and they're right. not very durable. So you can't use them in things like water um, and just more mm. moving parts that are, are susceptible to breaking. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Fair enough. So it's in specific scenarios, Absolutely. they can be really helpful, yeah, but we, not everything. We like to think of prosthetics as a tool to help aid you in your um, in your independence. And so sometimes the best tool is a myoelectric device, but not all the time. Now I want to introduce you to Tracy. She's a woman who was born with a congenital limb difference where her left arm didn't develop in a typical way. As a child, she wore a prosthetic for a short time, but then she hasn't been wearing one for about 40 years. They were heavy and a lot more awkward than they are now. And you can imagine that causes asymmetry to the body. And recently she's been developing back pain. So she's now wearing a myoelectric device. It has made a huge difference um, because I was having a lot of back pain. So even just having it on at my desk, if I'm not fully functionally using it, um, it helps with the back pain and I've noticed a big difference. The device needs to fit tightly, which is why Tracy puts on a cream so that she can slip into it more easily. Just imagine what it must be like for Tracy to do two-handed activities for the first time in decades. Things that most of us take for granted become possible as she practices using the prosthetic. So far, we've mainly talked about upper limb devices, and you might be wondering, is there something for the leg, for the lower limb? 
And the answer is yes. There's something called a microprocessor chip controlled knee. So I'm seeing a person right now that has an above knee amputation. So for them, we made a prosthesis that has a knee joint incorporated into it. So the way the knee joint works is it has, uh, this is a bit of a special prosthesis in that it has a knee that's controlled by a computer. So the computer helps tell the knee when to bend and when to stay straight. So you want the knee to be straight whenever the person has their weight on the prosthesis so they're not falling. Whenever the knee is picked up, whenever the prosthesis is picked up for swing phase, typically the knee wants to bend. So the computer helps to tell the knee when to do that. And it does that by sensors inside of the knee um, to help it stay stable or to help it to allow it to bend for swing phase. There are also other types of lower limb prostheses, and I find it so inspiring to see how resilient people can be, finding ways to get back to the activities that they love. I find this field of medicine absolutely incredible. There's so much exciting technology and room for growth and development. So I want to say a huge thank you to Tracy for sharing her story and to the entire prosthetics and orthotics department. So if you want to learn more about prosthetics, then check out this video next where we learn about how conventional prosthetics are made and how patients actually use them. So otherwise, be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.